Hey there, Moorhead family and friends. I'm grateful to be joining you, and I want to remind you that at Moorhead Church, things get better and better, even in light of our separation from each other physically. I hope that you are feeling connected to each other socially and through these worship experiences. During this season of Lent, we've been confessing our sin, and we've been receiving forgiveness. And hopefully, if everything works out, the words I'm going to be saying are going to be on the bottom of your screen so you can say them along with me. I am here on our back porch and Ivan's my cameraman and we're filming and hopefully these words and the words of my sermon will be interspersed with musical um, interludes so that it feels a little bit more like our worship services. Hear these opening words. O oh, mortal, can these bones live? Only the Lord God knows. O oh, people, hope in the Lord. With the Lord, there is steadfast love and great power to redeem. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. Trusting in the spirit of God let us confess our sin. O oh Lord, if you held our sin against us, who could live? Who could stand? We seem to have more faith in death than hope in your promise of life. We seek peace through war and find security in weapons. We abandon the hungry, sick, and dying and pursue wealth by making others poor. Even so, you love us. Still there is forgiveness with you. Therefore, we worship you. For you alone, O Lord, can save us from death and redeem us from our sin. Amen. Hear these words that declare our forgiveness. O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. If Jesus Christ dwells in you, the Spirit of God will be your life, and the grace of God will be your righteousness. And if the Holy Spirit dwells in you, then God, who raised Jesus from the dead, will give life to your mortal bodies also. Friends, this is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord God, great I am. You are resurrection and life. As we worship you this day, show us who we are, bearers of good news, messengers of resurrection, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
down this road. This, in fact, is the second sign that tells you you can't go down this road anymore. It's the end of our street, and sometimes we use this dead end like our uh, driveway. I'm not sure if our neighbors are crazy about that. But if you want to go any further down this road, you have to get out and walk. You have to change your mode of transportation. Once you do that, however, whole vistas open up. Down there, through this passageway, is the Greenway. The world opens up when you get to the Greenway. Dead ends become greenways. We're thinking about that today. Remember that the early Christian movement was called the way. Our story today comes from the Gospel of John. It's a long story. It's a story about Jesus's relationship with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. It's John chapter 11. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, the one whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness doesn't lead to death. Rather, it's for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you and you wanna go back to Judea again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day don't stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was refer referring mainly to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I wasn't there so that you may believe. Let's go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met Jesus while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know he'll rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, Lord, yes, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called to her sister Mary and told Mary privately, the teacher's here and he's looking for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but he was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her were also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? Then they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. 
So the Jews said, see how he loved Lazarus. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man said to him, Lord, already there's a stench because he's been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone and Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I've said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out and his hands and feet were bound with strips of cloth and his face was wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We make these movements from car to walking, from inside to outside, through doorways and passageways all the time. And we don't think twice in our regular lives about the ways journeys are ending and journeys are beginning. That's the power of our Jewish siblings practice of putting a mezuzah, a small box, on the doorpost of every door jam in their homes. The small box is nailed to the doorway and touched each time someone enters or leaves the room. What's in the box? Well, scripture, of course. Deuteronomy 6, 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one, the Lord alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. When we move quickly, we miss that God is always working to make a way out of what seems like no way. Now that we're slowed down, we have the luxury to remember that God is making a way out of what seems like no way related to this flu pandemic. Relax, God is working on something unexpected. After all, we Christians believe that Easter is coming, that there is an end to this worldwide suffering related to the COVID-19 virus. That's why we have an empty cross in our sanctuary. That's why we have an empty cross around our necks or maybe hanging in our ears or tattooed on our bodies. An empty cross, not a crucifix. Jesus is raised. Jesus has risen. Even in the midst of death, we are in life, in the midst of quarantine and stay-at-home orders, in the midst of stretch to the max ICUs and hospitals at capacity, we are in life. Can you hear the birds singing and see the trees blossoming? We live each day in the mix, in the mix of life and death, pain and beauty, faith and fear, disappointment and happiness. This is the kind of desperation that Mary and Martha are going through. Death in the midst of life. Their brother whom they loved is dead. He's ill, he's sick, sick unto death. Dead end. Gail O'Day, one of my professors and commentator on the Gospel of John, thinks that these two chapters, chapter 11 and 12 in the Gospel of John, is actually a beginning, not the end. A beginning of Jesus's hour. Jesus has said several times that his hour has not yet come, that God will not yet be glorified through him. It's not time yet. Well, Mary and Martha believe it's getting time. But you see, our God is an on-time God. He may not be there when you want him, but he'll be there right on time. 
it is an ongoing challenge for us to realize that God's time is not our time. We work with watches, with digital clocks, and with calendars. We work with Kronos time. God works with Kairos time. It's a mysterious kind of time, an ill-fitting time frame, according to our view. Here's some examples of God's Kairos time. A 53-year-old is unexpectedly pregnant with her fourth child. And what do you know? The fourth child is a girl, finally. The softening of a father after years of judgment against his son because his son didn't take over the family business. The father dies within three months of making amends with his son and forgiving his son. A prisoner comes to believe that her crime actually led her to the opportunity to know freedom, real freedom, the freedom we have through Jesus Christ. How'd she come to that conclusion? Through a prison ministry called Kairos, a reminder that God's time is not our time. That's what's so frustrating to us about these times. It's time for prom, but there's no prom. It's time for graduation, but graduation won't occur. There are no musical performances, no concerts, no trips. Now is not the time. That's what's so frustrating to Mary and Martha as well. Lord, if you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Both of them say the same thing. Then Martha goes on, Lord, there's already a stench because he's been dead four days. You know, in the King James Version, it says, he stinketh. I like he stinketh uh, because it's there's a finality and a dead end to what Martha says. And I like Mary and Martha because I think we contain both Mary and Martha. Parts of us are like Martha. Kronos, we work like clockwork. Come on, let's get this done. Put the silverware out. Where are the napkins? Put the salt and pepper shakers on the table. And parts of us are like Mary. We just wanna linger a little bit longer at the feet of Jesus. Can we not just have a conversation? Let's eat when we eat and not worry about the time. Kairos. We were reminded a few weeks ago by our Bishop Paul Leland to relax and remember that God holds the whole world in God's hands. That's a sense of kairos. When Jesus shows up, there's a collision between Mary and Martha's ideas about what should have happened and Jesus' ideas about what's going to happen. Your brother will rise again, Jesus says to Martha. Well, I know he will, she says, on the last day. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, Martha replies. She says, though, he's still going to stink. Jesus takes all of their feelings, anger, where have you been, resentment, if you'd only been here, grief, he's dead, fear, we're not sure about this, it's four days, it's clearly the dead day, fourth day, as there was a belief that it took three days for the soul to hover over the body before the soul went to heaven, so he's gonna smell really bad. Jesus takes all their feelings, anger, resentment, grief, and fear, and he takes their feelings and our feelings towards the fruition of his main point, the purpose of his being here, so that Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and so that we may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing in him, we might have life, life, life in his name. 
You see, our God makes a way out of what seems like no way. Our God turns dead ends in to green ways. Thanks be to God. Amen. take a deep breath sit straight with your shoulders back and open your hands and join your heart with mine as we pray let's pray 
God, I give you great thanks for the reminder that you turn all of our dead ends into some kind of way, whether it's a green way or an orange way or a red or yellow way, you turn what we think are dead ends and full stops into worldviews that are different and transformed. Help us to trust you. Help us to trust that you do have the whole world in your hands. Help us to believe that Jesus came to give us life, life abundant, and that through believing in him, we come to have life in his name. Remind us, God, that you created us for a life of love and laughter, that you gave us Jesus so that we might be forgiven and saved and renewed and healed over and over again. We're grateful for the comforter that we find in the Holy Spirit. We find it in the singing birds, in the rising sun, in the blooming trees a sense that you have all time within your grasp and that your Holy Spirit is here to advocate for us and to listen to all of our anger and resentment, our fear and sadness. Remind us, God, that you grant us a spirit of audacity and confidence because we are your children who are leaning toward resurrection and let that audacity and gumption provide us the strength we need to live each of these different days with courage, with comfort, and with clarity about the opportunity we have to help one another and show one another your great love. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and everybody said, Amen.